There's the magic ding. So we're live. It says this. In previous math courses, in theory, we learned how to convert within and using the SI system and the imperial system of measurements. Now, i got to be honest. I've always found, for me as a math nerd, measurement was never my favorite topic. Now, having said that, I do have to say to you, this is one of the few things you'll probably use someday. Almost everybody, at least once in their life, owns a house and decides to uh, redo the kitchen or build the basement or do an addition. Very few people never swing a hammer or use a saw or use a drill during their entire life. So a lot of this measurement stuff is also just to give you kind of a context so that when you're trying to plan stuff out, you know the vocabulary, which helps. So I would argue it's useful in some ways. It says, you learned how to convert between the SI system and the imperial system of measurements. Canada went metric when I was in grade one in 1976, I believe it was, we went metric. Pretty much every country except the U.S. has gone metric. The imperial system is feet, inches, pounds, which we still use in our metric society. I'm willing to bet most of you don't know your weight in kilos. Most of you probably don't know your height in centimeters. Most of you do weight and height in pounds and feet and inches. Fair enough. You got three methods last year. Method one was using the SI chart as a number line. Method two was called proportional reasoning, and method, me method three was unit analysis. It says, in this lesson, we will do a basic review of these methods and also introduce the concept of accuracy. Let's all underline the word accuracy if you're planning on buying the book. If not, you're going to be copying these notes out on a separate piece of paper. And precision in measurement. It says, recall the following charts used for conversion. It's a little interesting, actually, as it turns out, because a lot of these prefixes weren't important when I was young. Computer memory and technology has made some of these prefixes become more and more important. For example, most of you, if you own a thumb drive, it's in the gigabyte range. I can remember my first computer hard drive. It was 8 megabytes, and I was wondering, how will I fill that? Uh, eight megabytes, uh, a song and a half, if you're putting it into MP3s, basic, basically. But it seemed like, wow, I'll never fill that. I just bought a new computer two weeks ago, the hard drive. What comes after giga? I got a terabyte hard drive. And I thought to myself, I'll never fill that. Two years from now, I'm sure it'll be full. So we have our metric prefixes. The other one that's becoming more and more important in your society is nano. When I was in high school, nobody knew the word nanotechnology. More and more stuff is becoming so small, it's becoming available on the nano size. You can think of these as being on a metric number line, it says. I really don't like the way they've written this as decimals. This is one time I think powers of 10 are much, much handier. So here's what we're going to do. If you are planning on writing in your book, take your pencil out. Giga, this is actually 10 to the ninth. Write that above the 10. It is. There's nine zeros. Mega is 10 to the sixth. I would rather use the exponents because typing nine zeros, A, I'm likely to make a mistake and miscount, and it's too much typing. Kilo is 10 to the third. Hecto, lowercase h, is 10 to the second. And deca is 10 to the one. Tasha, give her an elbow. Okay, write this down or offer to stick around and do the whole lesson after school. So you got your workbook. If you're planning on buying it, start writing, my child. Shan, by the way, I know there's a one there. I'm not going to write the one where because that's too much work. Uh, let's go over this way. Do you remember from your scientific notation lessons way back in Science 10, how do we do decimals in scientific notation? David, this is going to be 10 to the 1 to, uh, to the negative 9. And micro 
Now, micro, by the way, has a weird symbol. We can't use M because M got taken by Millie. Micro, the symbol is actually where our letter M comes from. It's a Greek letter. It's the Greek letter mu. What does a Greek cat say? Mu. <laughs> yes, it's a math joke. It's 10 to the negative 6. Millie is 10 to the negative 3. Centi is 10 to the negative 2. And deci is 10 to the negative 1. Then you have what we call your base units. Meters, grams, liters, amps, candles. Those are physics units I'm pulling out. Joules. Thank you. Volts. So this is uh, 10 to the 0, which really means no 10s. By the way, what's anything to the zero power? Who remembers their exponent? Not, not zero. It's one. It's one. Okay? So each movement of one position, it says, represents a power of 10. And since it represents a power of 10, I find it easier to have the powers of 10 there in front of me. Then last year, I think on your provincial, you were given a conversion chart. Feet to inches, inches to centimeters, centimeters to inches, whatever. Blah, 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 blah. It says more conversions can be found online. Heck, there's an app for that. Turn the page. Or next page over. Page two. It says this. In the metric system, the units are related to each, fa uh, uh, each other by factors of 10. From the metric unit chart, we can create a metric unit number line for use in conversions. <sighs> blah, blah, blah. You know what? Let's just jump and let's do an example. Example one says this, use the metric unit line to complete the following, one meters, one meters, one meter to centimeters. One meter is how many centimeters? Hundred. Now, prove it. By the way, I'm glad they started with this one because we know what the answer is. What if I didn't know how to calculate the answer? Here's the method that will always work. And Zach, if you do these intuitively in your head, great. I'm not going to make you show me work, but I will this time for the one that we know the answer to. Let's write down a method that always works. First of all, we're starting out with one meter. Write that down. In B, the first thing that we would write down would be 2.3. In C, the first thing that I would write down would be 750. And then because they're prefixes, because these are powers of 10, I always write down a times 10 to the And then this method will always work. What was the power of 10 that we associated with meters? 10 to the what? Go look on the chart. As a number, please. Zero. What was the power of 10 we associated with centi? If you go as your exponent, the first one minus the second exponent, that will always work. It looks complicated, but actually it's uh, the first one minus the second one. Now, I have a minus minus here. What's a minus minus, Tamara, the same as really? This is the same as, get my calculator out, 1 times... 10 to the power of, what's 0 minus minus 2? There's the 100 that you all just know. That's where it comes from. You can turn it into an equation. Do you have to? No. Is it worth learning this? Hey, you won't be able to do every one of these in your head. This is the method. This is my fallback method, Chelsea, if I don't know what to do. Gives me 100. Let's try B. 2.3 liters to milliliters. So what I would do is I would go times by 10 to the, what was the prefix for, go ahead. Do you have a question? Have a question? Oh, okay. Uh, what was liters? Zero minus, what was milli? Negative three. This is going to simplify to This is our base units. Is there a prefix at all in front? 
So when there was no prefix, what did I put in that column? 10 to the what? That's where the zero came from. Honestly, I just remember no prefix. What's no as a number? Zero. It's going to be 2.3 times 10 to the power of, what is zero minus minus three? 2300. By the way, now's the time for you to figure out where the heck your exponent button is on your calculator, if you haven't already. 2300 milliliters. It is not the EXP. Those of you that have an exp, it's not that. For most new calculators, it's this little hat symbol most of the time. Uh, no, that'll just put a 2 on there. That'll square it, but you need a generic exponent. Uh, y to the x is the other one that shows up? Yes. So try typing 2.3 times, press your exponent button. Sorry, 2.3 times 10, then press your exponent button. The third. C. So if I'm going to do C and I want to go from centimeters to meters, 750 centimeters, now I know it's 7.5, but what if it's not one I can do intuitively? Again, I would go like this, times 10 to the, what's the prefix, what's the power of 10 that goes with centi? Negative 2 minus uh, 0, which, what is negative 2 minus 0, just plain old? So I can go to my calculator and I type in 750 times 10 to the power of negative 2, and that gives me the correct answer. Again, Kayla, let me emphasize. Do you have to do it this way? Nope. But will you be doing questions in your homework that you don't intuitively know the answer for? Yes. However, if you've got a system that works for you, Tasha, all the time, good. I'm just trying to give you something that works. By the way, also, you'll notice a minimum amount of writing. Also why I like it. Uh, 7.5. Units, meters. Okay. Nicole, we get to D. I'm willing to bet that D most of you can't do in your head and don't just automatically see the answer. I don't. No problem. I write down the number that they gave me, 72,350 times 10 to the milli. What was the exponent of 10 that went with that? Sorry? Negative, Negative 3 minus kilo. What was the exponent that went with that? You have the chart in front of you. I don't. 3? So my exponent is going to be negative 3. Take away 3. It's not 6. So if I want to now, I go to my calculator. 72,350 times 10 to the power of negative 6. Negative button. Yep, probably does. And I get uh, 72,350 milligrams is 0 0.07235 kilograms. 0 0.07235 kilograms. Yep. You got the chart in front of you on the previous page? Okay, you have to be open to this first of all. Okay, no, it's not there. It's on the chart that we had on the previous page. On page one. Okay, so C milli. What's the ten to the that we wrote? I told you to write above it. Uh, Negative three. Okay. What's kilo minus? And then what's kilo three? So it's always going to be your first one minus your second one. Always works. I have an answer. Did it give you a number in a, a fraction? Okay. Um, I will show you how yours, so yours does fractions automatically. You need to go from fractions to decimals. Bear with me. Our calculators, back to this. So, if you're looking for a standard procedure that will always work to convert with the metric prefixes, 
write down the number times 10 to the whatever the first prefix is minus whatever the second prefix is, and you get the power of 10 from the chart. Second topic is proportional reasoning. We call it cross-multiplying often. It says this, in order to use proportional reasoning, we need to know one of the following. A commonly known conversion or a ratio given in the question. Let's go straight to example two. It says this. Sideshow Collectibles is considering making a statue of a dinosaur. They are considering a scale whereby one centimeter represents 2.1 feet. The height of the statue of the dinosaur will be 12.5 centimeters. What's the actual height of the dinosaur? Okay. To do this, the key is to make sure you keep track of the appropriate units for each measurement. And if you do that, you can write one fraction equals one fraction and cross multiply. I'll show you what I mean. Write this down, pick up your pencils, write along with me. The first measurement I see is one centimeter. According to this sentence, one centimeter represents what? So I'm going to write 2.1 and I'm going to put the word feet right there for a very good reason. Equals. I've just written a fraction, a proportion, and that fraction had centimeters on the top and feet on the bottom. What I want to do now is write a second fraction, a second proportion, that has centimeters on top and feet on the bottom. So I keep reading and it says this, the height of the dinosaur will be 12.5 centimeters. I'm going to say, okay, 12.5 centimeters must go on top because that's what I had on top over here. I'll put an X there. This is called proportional reasoning. It says, look, if you have two things and you know they're the same size, write them as a fraction, one over the other, equals. Write your second fraction, keep the units lined up. And hey, how do you solve one fraction equals one fraction? What was the shortcut you learned way back in grade eight? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. Uh, if you know how to do it, you don't have to write it down, but there was a deafening silence, so I thought I'd write that down. How do we cross multiply? What's x going to be? Well, x times 1 is just plain old x. x is going to be 12.5 times 2.1. Cross multiply says multiply diagonally. So on your calculator, what is 12.5 times 2.1? 26.25 units, feet. Okay. You can convert from measurements as long as you have a proportion, as long as you write one fraction equals one fraction. So example three says, use proportional reasoning to convert 0 0.05 miles to inches. Huh? Well, let's go back and look at this chart here. It would be great if one of these had miles to inches in it, does it? That's feet to inches, that's yard to feet, that miles to feet, miles to yards, inches to centimeters, I don't see anywhere going from miles straight to inches. Uh, what do I see? We can go mile, from miles to what? I can go from miles to yards or to feet, but I do notice, Rashawn, that I also have uh, feet to inches. I think it's going to be smarter if I go from miles to feet, take that answer, go from feet to inches. How am I going to do that? Here's my first conversion factor. I'm going to write down one mile is the same as how many feet? 5,000 what? 5,280?
What measurement did they give me here? 0 0.05. 0 0.05 what? That's got to go on top then. Over. I can at least convert this to feet. How many feet is 0 0.05 miles? It's going to cross multiply. It's going to be 1 times x, which is just plain old x. It's going to be 0 0.05 times 5,280. Three hundred sixty-four. Two hundred sixty-four. Two hundred sixty-four feet. Rashawn, feel it right. Now we go from feet to inches. Now we could set up a fancy proportion here, but how do you go from feet to inches? What's the shortcut? Ah, we don't know. How many inches are in one foot? Okay, so the shortcut is times by 12. If you don't know, no problem. We set up another proportion. One inch, sorry, 12 inches is the same as one foot. Let's find out. And I got that straight from the first line of the chart. Right? 12 inches is one foot. Feet on the bottom, absolutely. Rashawn, since I used an X already, I don't want to get confused. I'll pick a different, because I asked you to. I'll pick a different letter. Why? Because I asked you. I know, I'll just never get tired of that joke. I'm sorry. I can't ever resist that. Why? Because I asked you to. No? <sighs> Tough audience. Some of them just got it. Oh, okay. Cross multiply again. We're going to get y times 1, plain old y, equals 12. And Rashawn, now we're answering your question. You were saying, do we divide or multiply? What do we do? Multiply by 12 or divide by 12? It, it, it comes out of the equation. It looks like I'm going to multiply by 12. Otherwise, that 12 would be on the bottom here, wouldn't it? Uh, what is 12 times 2,604? Nikki? 3168? Is that correct? People nodding? And that's going to be inches. Okay. Turn the page. Okay. We are going to temporarily pause here. Yeah, I'm going to give you the take-home quiz today to work on. I'm going to give you a little bit of homework that we've done so far. I'll give you the take-home quiz today because as I was speaking to you, I realized that for you guys, am I talking? Thank you. I realized that for you guys, this is a long weekend. You don't have school Friday, so let's see if I can give you the quiz and get it done Wednesday and then no homework for the long weekend. Now, your homework from what we've done so far, however, is if you turn, please, to page 6. Page 6. Right now, number 1, number 2. And number three. One, two, and three. We'll do more when we finish off the lesson tomorrow, but now I'm going to press stop and I'll give you your quizzes. I just got to go photocopy them really quickly so you can start on the homework. I'll have the quizzes back in about five.